What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to fully AFK Hermit, the first boss of the Necromancy release. This boss is pretty easy to kill and uh, I had to kill it a whopping 2555 times to get the pet, which uh, is pretty in line with my account's pet luck. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys don't go as dry as I did and uh, get yourself some power armor. So before I get too deep into this video, guys, you can see Hermit's just spawning here. So Hermit has two mechanics. The first mechanic is his slam attack that he just periodically does throughout the fight. Um, you can easily dodge this attack. It's very well telegraphed. You see on screen here, I think his next attack will probably be it. So he does this, puts a sword on the ground, and then slams. And you can easily dodge it if you want to. But uh, you can also just tank it. It has a max hit of about 2,500 with the full book active. So it doesn't really hit too hard, you know. Um, he also has a second attack. So I'm going to stall here and not kill Hermit. So if Hermit takes... Well... We're just going to have to uh, wait for the next one then. Okay, so hopefully this is a good point. Hopefully I don't end up accidentally uh, killing Hermid. So at about 50 seconds to 55 seconds, Hermid will, uh, he will spawn these phantoms and then go fully immune to all damage. So you have to end up killing those phantoms before you can re-damage Hermid. And this ends up being a problem. So he's about to spawn them here. Hopefully I don't just randomly die because I'm doing no damage. So he spawns these phantoms here, and you can see Hermit becomes fully immune, and we can't do any damage. Now, normally, this scythe ability would end up killing the phantoms, and it's no big deal. But if that doesn't end up killing the phantoms, you will end up taking too much damage and eventually dying. Which is the main issue with AFKing Hermit. If your DPS isn't high enough, you will end up dying, because you can't heal anything. You're just standing there taking damage, basically. So the way this works is it does enough damage before Hermit spawns the phantoms to just kill him. Okay, so moving on to the preset I use, you can see the preset I use on screen here. It also has the important parts highlighted. Um, to start off, I'm going to go over the relics. So I use Persistent Rage for this. I think it's absolutely required. Uh, it's super important to regen the adrenaline in between every kill and start with 100%. But the other relics could really be anything you want them to be on screen you, are the best ones. But again, you could replace this with really whatever other relics you want. Persistent Rage is the only required one. For the Familiar, the Blood Reaver is the only thing that really does anything. Uh, you could use a Calgarian Demon and manually cast the spec, I guess, but it's kind of pointless. You might as well just use a Blood Reaver. It does help quite a bit with DPS anyway. Uh, so moving on to the gear, you can see I use the Penance Aura. Um, even the Penance Aura sometimes didn't fully sustain prayer points. I would sometimes drain down to zero. Uh, I think this maybe is because I was using Lantodyne Incense Sticks and I wasn't quite getting enough prayer from my overloads. But it, even with that happening, uh, I'm still not able to regen quite enough prayer points with penance alone. So sometimes I would still have to hit the ritual shard or drink from my uh, super restore that you see. Uh, the other important thing on your gear is the salve amulet. E. Uh, it's super easy to get this. You just have to do the haunted mind quest uh, and then make sure you get the E version, of course. And uh, yeah, the salve amulet is insane. Um, Necromancy doesn't have damage caps, so the Salve Amulet's damage bonus with like the Undead Slayer perk and, and like all the damage boosts, they really stack and you're able to do insane amounts of damage with the, uh, just with your hits because there is no damage cap, so you'll just like casually hit like 15k's. It's kind of nuts. Um, but yeah, everything else you see in the gear setup, you could probably just use whatever else you have if you don't have these items. Uh, I found the full book to be the best for this just because it makes you take more damage. Um, it also does pretty solid DPS. Um, if you don't have a Zuck cape, you could easily just use the Ghost Hunter backpack. Same thing with the helmet. You could just use Ghost Hunter goggles if you don't have the helmet for whatever reason. Uh, the Ghost Hunter goggles and backpack are really strong. Um, they're just additional damage bonuses that 
make you just, again, hit really hard. Um, for the weapons, I just have standard perks in these from the optimal PVM perks on the wiki. A link to that will be in the description if I remember. Um, but yeah, just standard PVMing perks. The only special perk that I have is the Undead Slayer perk, which I will put a little picture of on screen, I guess. Um, the weapons could be tier 80, but I would suggest uh, tier 90. You can just do the, um, the challenge for uh, the tank armor and make the tier 90 weapons and then just have like tier 70 armor or something like that. Um, but yeah, tier 90 seems to be almost 100% consistent at skipping the phantoms. It seemed like with tier 80, you would usually skip the phantoms and when you didn't, it would kill them with the scythe, but occasionally they would survive and then you would just sit there getting a uh, hit, which uh, could turn into a problem, but uh, usually it wouldn't. Um, as for the armor, I just use the power armor. I would suggest using tier 70 armor or tier 80 even for this. The tier 90 armor seems maybe even a little bit too tanky, but uh, you know, obviously I wouldn't make a special set for this uh, boss if you have the tier 90. Uh, the gloves, I just use cinder banes. Obviously we're spamming poison damage with the blood reaver, so cinder banes are really good. Um, and then you could pretty much use whatever ring you want. Um, for the inventory, the only thing that's really, like, required, I guess, would be the weapon poison and obviously, like, overloads. But, um, yeah, I'm using overload salves because they regen a lot of prayer points, and that is pretty much required for this setup. Because, again, we don't really take a ton of damage, so penance isn't insane. Um, you could honestly just manually keep your prayer up and, uh, use a DPS aura as well. But that's obviously not fully AFK. The other things in this uh, setup are pretty self-explanatory. Um, the magic note paper is just for the crystal keys. You could honestly just leave them on the floor if you don't want to bring this. Um, I have Quorum and Lantadime incense sticks to increase poison damage and also increase the uh, duration of my overloads. I have a seed bag because it saves an inventory space. Uh, you could honestly just crush the seeds that are not really worth anything and then just omit the seed bag. Um, and then the Ritual Shard and Excalibur for rare points and healing. And then just a Spring Cleaner. Unfortunately, the Spring Cleaner doesn't clean up all of the salvage because apparently Necronium's just not allowed it yet for some reason. But uh, yeah, that is the preset that I used. And then after this, you'll be able to see the action bar. So you can see the action bar that I use on screen here. It's a pretty simple bar. It just pretty much spams the Skeleton Warrior, Special Attack, uh, Death Skulls, and then uh, ways to spam Volley of Souls. That's about it. A very simple bar. If you guys have a better one than this, uh, let me know. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the best bar, but it does seem to work pretty well. So moving on to the requirements, uh, obviously not every single requirement is going to be on here, but these are the main ones. Um, first, I would say 80 plus necromancy and the gear, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, 100 plus herb lore to make elder overloads. 92 plus prayer for soul split, although I would suggest 95 for the best curse. Um, and then also as always, 99 plus invention, but uh, I would suggest 120 so you can get the best invention perks without wasting a bunch of money. On to the quest requirements. You're obviously going to have to complete the Spirit of War to even access Hermit. You're also going to need to complete the Haunted Mine for the Salve Amulet, the Temple at Senesten for Curses, and then Plague's End for Combination Potions. I think those are the most important quests, but there are, again, obviously a lot more things that you're going to need, but those aren't listed in this video. All right, guys, so you can see me here at the little entranceway to Hermit and the other boss, Riesel the Weasel. Um, before I get too deep into this, you can check this out. 2555 KC, and uh, yeah, this was to get my Hermit pet, so... Uh, I've definitely done this quite a bit, so it uh, definitely works, I guess, for me. So let's get right into Hermit. Uh, definitely put it on fastest. I've noticed a bug where it doesn't default to fastest. So basically, you stand right at the point here, 
And then, uh, yeah, you just click Hermit. Make sure you're overloaded, poisoned, all your stuff is on. Use Penance as well. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So, basically, you can see the action bar on screen here. The way this works is we summon the Skeleton Warrior and then command it on the first slot in the bar. And then the second slot in the bar is Death Skulls. So what ends up happening is you summon the skeleton warrior and then you cast death skulls and then you command it and start spamming out as much damage as possible. Uh, and then you also get quite a bit of damage from the spectral scythe ability as well as volley of souls. Um, you don't really use finger of death too often, but um, yeah, the um, so basically this command skeleton warrior ability spams out damage it does like a thousand damage a tick for does it say how long this lasts for a six second duration yeah it spams out a thousand damage uh which is basically ten thousand damage for this one ability uh it's pretty solid it doesn't actually soul split you any hp or anything like that but it's still like a really solid ability um one thing i've noticed when i was using lower level gear is pre-casting summon the skeleton can help quite a bit if you just like at any point before the kill starts just summon the guy but uh at tier 90 it's no big deal really so yeah you can see this basically just sits here and uh kills the boss i guess it's pretty straightforward uh the action bar on screen here uh, may not be the most optimal bar i'm sure there's probably a better bar out there but i found this one to work pretty well um it's definitely a solid bar and uh yeah hopefully you guys use this to get your herman pet and then you know maybe get your tier 90 gear and then just never come back to this boss because it, let's be real herman is a wormin look at this little feller down here if you made it this far thanks for watching guys definitely drop a like on the video it does help quite a bit but uh what do you guys think about the city of um it's uh a very interesting place we can drive around here in our little space vehicle wow pretty cool anyway guys i will see you guys in the next one and uh thanks for watching